Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. I have a special feature for you, one which many of you have asked for many, many times, and I finally decided to build it. So this feature builds on block references for images, but this now takes it a step further. Let's start this demonstration with something that should already be familiar. So imagine I have this drawing and I have this group of elements here. So this is grouped into an Excalibur group. If I right click on the group, I can select copy link for selected elements. And I get this dialog where I can either copy a link, an area or a group reference. I'm not going to go deep into what area and group are. There's the other video linked in the description that you can watch for that. I'm now going to click on group. And if I head over to a markdown document and I paste this, then this part of that larger image is pasted here. If I long click on this, then my original image opens and it's zoomed on the element. This is super useful. Now the new feature it allows you to do exactly the same with Excalibur drawing. So now if I head over here, and just simply press Control V, or I can also just simply paste, then this part of the image from the other image was inserted here. So I think this is as you would expect how it works. Now, I want to show you two more interesting things here. So first of all, if I take this house and I'm going to, or this, frame. So this is using the frame tool. If I right click on the frame and copy the link for selected elements, then now you can see that I have two new buttons. I have frame and clipped frame. So let's first copy the frame. So if I copy the frame and head over here, then you will see that everything in the frame was copied here. So if I come back here, you will see that actually this cart didn't fit the frame, but it was these elements were contained in the frame. So in case of a frame reference, the entire, all the elements from the frame are referenced without the clipping. And this is why, and this was available until now, but only to markdown documents. So imagine I can come over here. And of course, in the markdown document as well, I can paste this frame reference. What's new is now I also have the clipped frame reference. If I click this and come over here, then you can see that now the cart is inserted with the clipping of the frame. Also, it's maybe not so noticeable, but I think you can see this, that here you can see there's a padding so this is the default padding that was set up in your settings. If it's a clipped frame, then the padding is going to be zero. So it's going to be right on the frame. But so this is the clipped frame reference. And of course, the same works for a markdown document as well. So I can insert a clipped frame here as well. But in this case, the entire frame is included. So you can also notice that the empty space above the cart is included here because this is the frame window, while in this case it's the elements within the frame with the frame reference. And then the final piece I want to show you is notice how this frame is called a cart and this frame is called a house. Now, first of all, notice that my reference here includes a long ID. So this is the ID of the element. But if I now change this to house, then of course this frame reference will now reference the house frame. And similarly here, if I change this, so this is my clipped frame, change this to house, then you will see that here it's the clipped house. So that's the entire house with all the elements. And this is just the clipped house. And you can notice that in this case, my reference says clipped frame. The same works in case of the inserted images here. So here you cannot change the reference in Excalibur. 
you need to change over to markdown view mode. You need to flip the page. And here, if you open Excalibur data and you come down to embedded files, then I can change this reference here to house. If I want to see what I'm doing, I can also put the exclamation mark here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change this one to house as well. And now if I flip back, then you will see that these images were now replaced with the frame references of the house. This allows you maybe even from script to select which part of an image you want to insert here. And then the final feature I wanted to show you, which is just a small bonus feature, is if I have no elements selected, I just simply click on the back of the image then I now have this new function here, copy embed link for this drawing. This is super useful because if I click this, I can, for example, come over here and press paste. And with that, I've inserted that drawing. So this is just a very quick reference. I can do the same here. So if I now copy embed link for this drawing and head over here, then you can see that I was able to very quickly paste this image right here. I think this just makes it so much more convenient and easy. And also, if you want, this is available, this command, uh, copy, a link for, copy link for selected elements, but also copy link for this drawing is available on the command palette. So you can use Obsidian hotkeys if you want to set something up. Now that we've looked at the feature, let's quickly look at how deconstruction and image fragments are similar and different. I'm going to be using the double bubble map, one of my favorite visual thinking tools to do this. I'll include a link in the video description to my video about the double bubble map. But let's jump in and first look at the similarities. So both deconstruction and image fragments helps you break down complex visuals into more manageable components. They allow you to isolate parts of a larger drawing and thus enhance focus on specific elements within that larger context. And they allow you to link and reuse visual elements in different drawings. But then there are some differences and I made these into pairs. So. On one hand side, deconstruction creates reusable icons for repeated use, typically icons that you want to repeat many times. On the other hand, image fragments create a part or reference a specific part of a larger illustration. This is, for example, perfect for an infographics type of setup where you have a big image and then you take parts and you break the image up and you provide some explanation around it. Now, in case of deconstruction, the carved out element becomes context neutral. So once you've deconstructed it, you can use it many places and it will be neutral to the context. On the other hand, image fragment, retains the context of the fragment source. So the original image, of course, the larger image is always referenced when you're referencing that part of the image. Deconstruction is suitable for frequent reuse across multiple contexts, as I mentioned earlier. On the other hand, image fragments are ideal for infrequent and specific references. And based on or along this line of logic, the construction is efficient. It only will render or Excalibur, the plugin will only need to render those isolated elements. While in case of image fragments, the entire image is rendered and then the part is isolated. Now, in my mind, the construction is more robust because you have a dedicated file for your carved out element. In case of an image fragment, it's fragile because imagine you have a group of elements and you forget about the link. 
and then you ungroup the elements and regroup them. And with that, the group ID is going to change, which means that your link is going to break. And you're not even going to notice it until several months later, you open the other document and you notice that, oops, I don't even know what that reference was meant to do. Now, the deconstruction approach benefits from having an icon library and a naming convention. And I'm going to include my link to the icon library video in the description. On the other hand, image fragments, your library is actually the source image itself. So you will need to open the source image and reference the elements there. And finally, deconstruction allows you to further deconstruct elements into smaller parts. So imagine you have a picture, you deconstructed the house, and then in a next step, you can deconstruct the window from the house and so on. So as a comparison, I think these thoughts hopefully help you decide when to use image fragments and when to use deconstruction. And with that, that is all I wanted to share with you today. If you're interested to learn more about my visual thinking workflows, about Excolidraw and become a real power user, not only of Excolidraw, but also of visual thinking in Obsidian Excolidraw, I recommend that you check out cohort 10 of the visual thinking workshop, which will commence at the end of August. Thank you.